those are the three portions to the amino acid. And then on the side here are our essentials. We've got valine. Now this is where being a chemist is fun, folks, because you get to think about this stuff. You got these evolutionary guys out there manipulating everybody. There's something really special about these amino acids. Not from the DNA coding pro progressive onto making the whole protein, all that, blah, blah, blah. It's looking at the structure here. This is an essential amino acid. There's two methyl groups on a carbon. I mean, this looks pretty basic to me, doesn't it? Out of those 24 now, well, the four we won't count. So 20 amino acids, some of them are pretty intricate. That is an essential one, valine. Hmm, it's pretty simple to me. And here's another one, leucine, right? Four carbons, two methyls off the end. I mean, other than that carbon right there, this is identical to valine. So valine and leucine, there's no enzyme to put a carbon right in the middle of that. So you can have a valine deficiency, you can have an ice, a leucine deficiency, you can have an isoleucine deficiency. So out of these three what are called hydrocarbons, these are essential amino acids. So used to saying essential elements, essential amino acids. They're hydrocarbons, there's not much to it. Okay, now over here, I would expect something like histidine. I'm going to say this. I've been calling it histodine. There's an I, histidine. This is forming a ring around. Look, you got the nitrogen alien there. You got another nitrogen over there with a plus on it. This is an essential amino acid. Okay, that one I can understand. This here, tryptophan, this is an essential amino acid also. Well, you know, you got a benzene ring with a nitrogen ring with a carbon in between. See, now this tryptophan, if you remember, this is one that isn't used structurally. It's a neurotransmitter mostly. Phenylalanine, same thing. You won't see this used as in the tertiary structure as much as being involved in neurotransmission. So neurotransmitter. This is the one in your sodi pop, the NutraSweet, whatever the artificial sweeteners have. Phenylketones, they call them. Screws up some people's chemistry. You know, it's not the caffeine. They get you so involved with caffeine. Caffeine mimics adenine, with, so it's doing some stuff too with neurotransmitter. Tyrosine. This is the benzene ring with the alcohol on the end. So this is essential. You know, I can understand that. It looks pretty complicated. You might not have an enzyme that could make that. Not even from phenylalanine. See, that's what's amazing. You got phenylalanine already. You think you would have an enzyme that would just put an OH on the end of it. But no, you don't. So you need both those from your diet. Now over here, you got another polar, alcohol. This is that one I was telling you, see the alcohol's in the middle, it's not a terminal. Serine had the alcohol on the end of it. This has the alcohol on the first carbon off the ring there. So this is polar, it's an alcohol. Another essential, this is the sulfur ones. Now this is the sulfur on the end. This is the one you'll see doing the disulfide bonds between the protein strands. So cysteine is a sulfur, and methionine. So the two sulfur ones are essential. This has a methyl on the outside of that sulfur. This has the sulfur right on the end. So remember when we were looking these up before? We had the alcohol, OH, cysteine, SH, and then we had the selenocysteine. So these are your essential, essential amino acids, gang. Methionine, cysteine, threonine, where's fourine? Tyrosine, 
Phenylalanine. Tryptophan. Histidine. And then we come to these little hydrocarbon ones. Isoleucine. It's four carbon isomer leucine. And then simple little valine. These are essential to your diet. So when you're eating protein, this is what my beef is. Your labels on your food just say protein. Well, how do you know if they're essential amino acids or just regular amino acids? When you're eating high protein diet, it takes a lot of water. You get dehydrated from it. So this is with the three-dimensional structure. We're going to make the amino acid side chains out of the balloons now. Double bond on that oxygen. So when we look in here, we see it. See the electrons, one bond, two bonds. So what happens is for ozone, ozone is bent. So the way you picture this is the way that was hanging. So it's kind of kind of bent. You get this to hang like that, it ain't going to happen, is it? There's three of them. And then when the ultraviolet ray hits it, boom, one goes off. Now you're left with two. That's the dioxygen that you're breathing. O2. Double bonded. That's what those pairs of electrons are, the Velcro. NO2. NO2. It's going to get water vapor to hit it, and it's going to make an NO3, HNO3, nitric acid. 